Guys, thank you for watching to this part of the video. What's up? Welcome to my settings. I am going to show you guys my settings. I'm going to bust them down for you and answer a bunch of questions that I usually get about them. So let's dive right in. And right on, on the first page, we are in my PC settings. And for all my controller players that play on PC, I'm going to break these down for you. So always play on full screen, 1920 by 1080. I keep VSync off. This pretty much gives you a load of input delay. Make sure you have this off. And my frame rate limiter, I don't play on 60 FPS. Even though it says it does, I actually play on 237 locked. I manually overrided my frame rate limiter in my game files so I can get the lowest amount of input delay as possible. And I made a video on how to do that. It's right up in the top right corner of your screen right now. You can go ahead and tap that for after this video. And obviously I'm on performance mode. Then for my brightness and colorblind settings, I only ever change this if I'm playing pubs or if I'm playing ranked. And if I ever play ranked, I'll turn this up to about 110, a 111-ish, and I'll put it on Tritonope and this on 10. This lets you see through storm so, so much better, but I usually keep it just normal like it is whenever I'm playing just creative and recording videos. My 3D resolution, 100%. View distance and textures on low. Then for my game settings, so you console players also listen up. I got toggle sprint on, of course. Auto open doors, I keep this off because I always accidentally open a door when I'm not meaning to. Mantle activation, make sure this is on hold jump, not hold forward. Hold jump is definitely the wave. You're gonna accidentally mantle over your builds when you definitely don't mean to and it does it automatically, so make sure you have that on hold jump. Then hold to swap pickup, this gives a really bad input delay when Ever you're trying to pick up a weapon, so don't use this. Talk about targeting, mark danger with targeting, auto pick up weapons, and keep all of these off. These are my preferred item slots. You can go ahead and copy them down here. The only thing I'd say is make sure you keep your shotgun in your first inventory slot. So whenever you're building and you put your builds away, you can instantly hit your right bumper and it'll automatically get your shotgun. Auto sort consumables, that doesn't really matter. Then reset building choice, make sure you have this on. Disable pre edit option. This also gives a really, really bad edit delay, especially if you're on console. Make sure you turn this off. Turbo building on, auto confirm edits. I I only have on edit and that's simply because I have a scroll wheel on my controller an actual scroll wheel as you can see here but if I didn't use my scroll wheel I would keep this on both and that's pretty much what I recommend for every other controller player as well then extra game options these are all personal preference except tap to search you definitely you need to have this one on that's a pretty important one then everybody already knows this but make sure you have your replays off unless you're actually going to use them this just pretty much has your game recording in the background and it takes a lot of performance so if you're on console be sure to turn these off then energy saving mode. This is a big one. This will absolutely destroy your FPS. So make sure you turn this off. It's pretty much just trying to limit the power consumption of your system. And you don't want that. You want to take up as much power as possible to get all those juicy frames, baby. Then the reticle and damage feedback. This is pretty much what I have. If you like what my numbers look like, whenever I shoot someone, there you go. You can copy these. The HUD scale at 75%. And I usually keep everything on here except latency, debug stats, and creative runtime performance stats. You don't want creative runtime performance stats on because it constantly runs in the background while you're playing creative modes. So if you want a little bit better FPS and a little bit less input delay, keep that one off. Then for gyro settings, make sure you just have all of this off. Even if you don't use it or you have an Xbox controller just like me, just keep all of these off in general. You don't want your console or your PC searching in the background for a compatible controller for gyro. So just in case if that is happening, make sure you turn this off. And for keyboard and mouse sensitivities, that's just not why you're here. Keyboard and mouse absolutely sucks. Everybody that's watching this video will agree. But to the juicy details, okay? So controller options, all right? Build immediately, Builder Pro, you would definitely want this one on. Edit hold time. This doesn't matter. If you're pressing and holding B to edit your builds, you are just way too far behind. You need to change that bind. And I'm going to give you some recommendations here in a minute. Slide hold time. I feel like this is the perfect, perfect slide hold time. I usually never slide whenever I'm not meaning to. And I usually never crouch when I'm really trying to slide. So it works pretty good for me. Reset camera axis. This is just for the gyro aiming. So don't even worry about it. Then vibration. I got it please turn this off. If you play with vibration, you're just an absolute psychopath or you probably just play zero builds. And especially if you're on linear in a low dead zone, if your controller is vibrating, sometimes it can mess up your aim long range. So if I were you, I would just turn it off. Then for the non-advanced look sensitivity and aim sensitivity, these two are grayed out. And if you are still on four, just like this here, if these numbers are four, I want you to turn your use advanced options off just like how I did. And I want you to come here and turn both of these to one, then turn your advanced options back on. This pretty much gets rid of an in-game dead zone. It's That's the best way I can explain it. You need to try this for yourself, but when you put this on one, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Your crosshair placement will be so crisp and it'll feel amazing. So definitely try it out and come back to this video. Tell me what you think.
link. And for build mode sensitivity and edit mode sensitivity, if you're going to change these, make sure you keep these the same. Because if you change one and you change the other, it will keep it consistent for your muscle memory not to be freaking out and trying to get used to different sensitivities. Keep these the same. And I would recommend starting somewhere around 1.7, then slowly start to move up as you get more advanced. But that's only if you're not an advanced builder. And if you watch my videos, you're simply a goat. You know what I mean? You're just a goat. So I recommend that you try 2.0. 2.0 is a really, really solid sense. Then for your look sensitivity, 40% is the absolute sweet spot for me. Some people bring it up to 43. And remember, this goes for the look sensitivity as well. Make sure you keep these the absolute same. Don't change these. Obviously, if you do, you're kind of a psycho because up and down, left or right, if you have those different, you're just, yeah, you're a different breed, man. So make sure you keep those the same. Keep those consistent. Then turning boost, you don't need any of this crap. You don't need any of this. You don't want boost while building. None of that. Just keep all that off. Then for your ADS speed, I keep it anywhere between 9 to 12%. 11% has been my sweet spot for uh, like years. And I get feedback all the time on my settings. People tell me that they are the absolute best settings I've ever tried. So if you want to hit beams like I did in this video, try 11%. Then the turning boost ramp time, keep this at 0.20 seconds. And the reason why is because whenever you're aiming down sights and trying to hit a long range shot, your ADS input curve will actually slow down a little bit. So it's pretty much adding a little bit of exponential to your linear, which is a good thing for long range shots. You do have to get used to this one, but it is worth learning. So I would highly recommend you give this a shot. And look dampening time. If you still use this, you probably haven't played since chapter one. So uh, yeah, just make sure you turn this one off. This is this one's horrible. Then look input curve. Listen, if you're not on linear, you're absolutely taking the L. You have to be on linear nowadays. There's only a few good exponential players left and everybody else has switched. I highly, highly recommend you learn linear. Even say strength, always keep it at 100. Some people say turning it down to 99% or 98% gives you more aim assist. No, keep it at 100%, man. Don't turn your aim assist down. I've seen some YouTube shorts and TikToks with millions of views saying if you take this down to 98%, it'll give you special power. No, keep this at 100%, okay? And for your dead zone, I jump with my left stick and whenever I jump, Sometimes I'll accidentally move it just a little bit, even though I'm not trying to. So I keep the dead zone on my left stick about 15%. And if you edit with your left stick, you're probably going to want to crank that up even higher than 15%. This will help you a lot. Give it a shot and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Then for the right stick dead zone, people say that this changes depending on controllers. And I have PS4, PS5, old Xbox controllers, Xbox Series S, Xbox Elite controllers, Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. None of them change the fact that you need to be on a five dead zone. And if your controller has a naturally bigger dead zone, you're going to want the dead zone as low as it could possibly be. So if you're not playing on a five dead zone, make sure you make the switch. And also you can come and use my 1v1 map that has a slow mode to really hone in on your crosshair placement. Ever since I've been playing with slow mode, I've been able to get my crosshair placement down to an absolute T. If you're changing your sensitivity, this is going to help you tremendously. So here's the map code. If you want to come give it a shot. And then last but not least, make sure you have foot controller off. You don't want your system searching in the background for a compatible controller, just like the gyro settings here. Just make sure you turn this one off. Then audio settings, this is all personal preference, but if you want, you can turn your sound quality on low. That will help you get a little bit more FPS. And the same thing with subtitles here, you can turn everything off or all the way to the left. That also will save you some FPS. Then my keyboard and mouse settings, if you actually want to see these, but nobody cares. Like I said, control on top, baby. All right, and then into the controller binds. Okay, guys. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I have a controller scroll wheel up here, and this also comes with a middle mouse button attachment. And this middle mouse button is just like an extra paddle for the back of my controller. And this is what I use to sprint, as you can see in my gameplay. But before I had the scroll wheel attachment, I would use left on my D-pad, and I just got rid of my place marker bind. So that's what I recommend you sprint with if you don't have an extra paddle or an extra bind open or a controller scroll wheel attachment like me. And like I said earlier, down left stick is my jump, and I'm I'm just going to wiggle my way up here so you can see the rest of my settings. So really quick, if you don't have four paddles like me, these controller binds won't work for you. So A is my edit, B is my toggle pickaxe, X is my switch mode, and Y is my reload. Now I'm going to place on screen right now what the paddle binds are for my Xbox Elite Series 2 controller if you want to copy my paddle binds. And I also showed you in the beginning of the video which paddle does what on the back of my controller. And if you play non-claw, non-paddle, I recommend your build mode be your down left stick and your edit be your down right stick and your jump binds something else. But if you only use two paddles, I recommend your left paddle be your build mode and your right paddle be your edit and your down left stick be your jump. Then moving on to my build controls. Everything pretty much stays the same here, but one very, very important thing you need to do is change your down right stick from rotate to crouch. This pretty much lets you crouch when you have your build mode out, which is super important because if you're, you know, if you're building and you're trying to slide or let's say you're in an awkward position like this, you can just crouch to get right on out and you don't even have to put your builds away. You can just be crouching, you know what I'm saying? So I highly recommend this one. And as you can see, pretty much all the rest of that stuff is the same. And for my edit controls, my right bumper is my reset, which I still use to this day, even though I have a controller scroll wheel to do cone flip.
clips just like this. In my confirm bind, I use my left bumper. That is the absolute best confirm bind in the game. I still confirm all of my single tile edits. So pretty much any of my double edits like this, I do confirm or my drag edits like this, I don't confirm. I just use confirm on release. And that's because confirming your edits on controller is way faster than just using confirm on release. So yeah, if you want faster edits, use left bumper to confirm. Then you got the ability controls that no one cares about and the old dead zone menu. But guys, that's about it. And guys, if you want the chance to 1v1 me, come load up into matchmaking in my map, bro. I'm always in here 1v1 random people and talking in voice chat. So come say what's up to me and come play with me. And also, if you want to learn the best high ground retakes for controller players, make sure to click the video on screen and I will see you in there. Thanks for watching to the very end. Much love. Peace out.